Today is Saturday, it's the 29th of October 2022 and we've come down to Santa Ponza today. Uh, it's uh, the end of October and uh, the season's about to end now. Um, we're, we're here very early in the morning, it isn't even 10 o'clock yet and it definitely feels a little bit cooler. It is. And since we were last here, uh, definitely something different on the beach. All of the uh, protection, the beach protection is now being put out for the winter time to stop the sand moving too much. Um, I certainly wasn't expecting that at this early stage. Um, usually I would have thought that would have been after the, the season ended. Um, we look across the road, <laughs> lots of the shops have not even opened yet. My guess is most of those will be opening uh, later on. But because it's the end of October, uh, we'll probably find that most of the hotels in this area, many of the hotels, will be closing. And uh, Santa Ponza will go into winter mode. At the moment, um, places are open. Here's the beach cafe, nobody there yet, or one person having a coffee. Uh, there are parasols and there are beach beds. So, it's still holiday season and we've been having amazing October weather. If you've been looking on the news from elsewhere, in Northern Europe in particular, you'll be amazed at the temperatures we've been uh, enjoying here in Mallorca, where the, the temperatures have been well into the high 20s. And uh, just the other day in Soyer, the temperature was recorded at 34 degrees Celsius. That must be some sort of a record. And it sounds as though uh, this year, um, this October actually, is going to go down as the hottest on record. So, uh, climate change, well, that remains to be seen, yep. Certainly. Um, it is warmer. I did look on my Facebook and nine years ago I did post a picture of a thermometer on our terrace that was 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is not unknown, but such a prolonged period of extra high temperatures is a little bit unusual. Well, the good news is Anita and I are on half term. School's out for us. We don't actually coincide with the UK half term. And that's largely because next week, <coughs> the 1st of November is a, a public holiday here in Spain. It's All Souls Day. And uh, it's when the people go to the cemetery and remember those who've passed on. So cemeteries become garlands of flowers, there's just thousands of them. And they get very difficult to actually get to. And we're just heading up towards the, uh, the square and we'll see shops starting to open up and bars. Some of the early bars will be opening up, some of them won't be bothering until lunchtime. And uh, because we're on holiday, we've actually booked a holiday, which is something quite unusual for us. Usually uh, our holidays involve going back to the UK to visit our family. But because the UK half term and our half term don't actually coincide, um, not really a lot of pointers going back because all our family are back at school or back at work. So um, we're staying in Mallorca and uh, going to spend a few days away from home. But uh, you'll have to find out about that by watching the videos later in the week and uh, you'll see where we've actually. <laughs> yeah, you'll actually see where we're, we're going to. So the, um, the news around the Calvia area, which includes Santa Ponza 
uh, Pagera Magaluf and Parmenay over there, the big, big resort here, is that uh, this weekend and <clears throat> over the next weekend, next week, many of the hotels, almost all of them, will be closed. So you'll find it difficult to find a hotel that's open. It's not true that they're all closed. Some will be open, but they're going to be few and far between. Consequence of that is that uh, the bars and the businesses don't have clients. And if they don't have clients, the bars and the businesses will also be closing, or at least a lot of them will. Again, it's not going to be all of them. You will, you will find some bars open, and there's always some businesses open. So uh, it just gets a lot, lot quieter. And the change will be dramatic. It'll be almost uh, overnight, certainly over the period of this week. By contrast, I read this week that 80% of the hotels in Palma, in the city, will be open. So. If you fancy a city break, then Palma will be open and there most of the businesses will be open as well. 80% of the hotels are open. It's going to be quite a busy winter. And uh, Christmas is going to start a little bit early. They're going to... The lights are up already in Palma. Yeah, the lights are already up. They're not on yet, but they are going to bring forward the switching on a little bit earlier this year. So, not sure of the exact date, but uh, uh, third part of November, we'll have the switching on of the Palmer Christmas lights. And they do a great job, so... We've already seen in different parts, different villages around the city or different parts around the city where the lights have gone up. I don't think they've appeared in Canada yet, have they? No, so our lights haven't appeared, but they will do very shortly, I'm sure. And uh, it's really quite nice. It's a bit controversial because uh, everyone's been told, you know, save energy. Uh, it could be a rough winter and uh, they're turning the Christmas lights on. And I think the, the government have decided to do it in order to bring a little cheer to the place. It's uh, a lot of depressing things going on. Not necessarily here in Mallorca, but throughout the world. And so uh, a little bit of cheer, well, hopefully, lift people's spirits and I always enjoy walking through Palma to see the the lights so we'll be we'll be in Palma at some point and uh, make a, a video of the Christmas lights this year see how they compare with previous years So, still open here, a lot of the hotels, but a lot could be closing today. And where we're actually going to, I think it might be the last week that that particular hotel is open. But more about that later in the week. Um, apologies for not posting any videos this week. Really haven't had time to get out and about. Um, the run up to half term has been incredibly hectic. Any teachers out there, you'll know what it's like. And uh, to add to that, we have an inspection coming up. In the UK, um, used to be HMIs when I worked there. But <coughs> They're now the uh, Ofsted inspections and a group of inspectors will come round to your school and uh, inspect. 
to uh, look at the teachers, see how they're teaching, look at the, the school is being run, look at the facilities. They look, can look at just about anything and everything concerning the school. And uh, we have the same thing periodically. We have inspections. And so uh, we have to prepare certain things which we don't normally have to prepare on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the things that uh, has taken a lot of time is called a scheme of work. It's a plan of what you're going to be doing. And you might say, well, surely you've got that already. Well, the answer is yes, we did already have it. But uh, for some reason, there was a decision to change the format. And it uh, means really pretty much doing it all over again. Rejiggling it so it's a totally different format. And uh, it's meant hours and hours of work. Uh, so all of that had to be done before the half term. And uh, the actual inspection is going to be on the day we return. So crazy. Uh, people will be just getting back from the holiday straight into that. Really tough for the teachers. And yeah, it's uh, for us, we're only a very small school, so it's, uh, it's a one day event. And uh, the team comes in and uh, does their bit and then makes a report. Uh, that's the school now how they're doing and that's how it works in all the schools in uh, Spain all the British schools in Spain we can come under the British schools so in order to have a license to work we have to be inspected and that uh, has to be a po positive result which then gets on, sent to the Spanish government who will approve um, the school's operation and carry on for another few years or whenever the next inspection is going to be. Nearly at the top now. I said at the bottom it was a bit cooler, but I've certainly warmed up walking up the hill. How about you? A little bit warmer? <laughs> and he's a bit warmer too. <clears throat> and the sun's coming out too. So we're coming over the hills, so we'll soon be in the shade again. It. We're at the top now, or top of the part we're going to. Uh, there is a road that goes up and up and up. No, we're not doing that. Certainly not walking anyway. Any boxing fans amongst you? That's where Nigel Ben used to live, just up there. His son Connor has been in the news recently. Uh, was due to make a fight. Unfortunately, that uh, had to be cancelled due to some testing issues, which I don't think have been sorted yet. Nigel himself, Nigel Ben, a really nice character, a really nice man. So, Anita's just spotted some uh, nice pottery and uh, under the toilet. What have we got? Where are I going? There we go, that's where Anita goes, just under the yeah. toilet. <laughs> we do have some of these, uh, I think this one, we something like that we have at our house. And thermometers, we always like to see thermometers, but they're directly in the sun, so don't believe the temperatures that might be on them. So when I quote a temperature from our terrace, the thermometer is actually completely in the shade all the time, it never gets into the sun. So it's air temperature, which is not the same as sun temperature. 
Now there's a butcher. A traditional type butcher. Shakutaria. Sea place is just beginning to get ready for the day. Cleaning after last night. Quite a nice walk to get up there. Certainly got the the blood rushing through. Been missing out on the walk, so not got, I've not been getting up to my uh, required numbers of steps. I think I'm sure Anita has. She walks a lot, and uh, so she does get the steps done. I'm a little bit out of condition, so I've got to get uh, get into practice over the next few days while we're on holiday. Just coming up to the square. And it's good to see that uh, they have had some entertainment on this year. It was all a bit questionable since the lockdown. But the big poster board there still got a couple of acts on. Uh, some Saturday and Sunday, so weekend. Nothing else is up there. So we're going to have a look, see what's going on. Not a lot. Not a lot, no. Well, you wouldn't expect a lot to be going on in the square on Saturday morning. So everything pretty much closed up for the morning but uh, a little bit later on this will all be springing to life it's always a good sign to see the tables and chairs that are still out in the middle of the square there's lots of tables and chairs out The, the bars just around the side, Hogan stand, Prince William, crown, walking amongst them. They use the stage which I think is probably what the square is famous for and uh, later on this evening I'm sure this place will be buzzing perhaps for the last times. Shop's open. You still need to buy some gifts. Oh, it's beginning to open. It's not quite open. Some of the things need to be pulled out of there. No room to get in. Down there, you've got the trampolines there. There, they'll be set up later on, I'm sure, for people to use, children to use. And the red telephone box. It's actually got a telephone inside. People still use them? Can't imagine. Mini little racetrack. So we should have a coffee down at the front rather than here. It's a bit dead. <laughs> yeah, we'll find somewhere else for coffee. We're not, we're not going to have a coffee here. 
Some of this, though, has uh, never been cleaned up since the pandemic. So it's been sitting there for the last two years and deteriorating. So what was actually probably a quite a valuable asset now is worth very little, I suppose. You don't have to, uh, if you're coming to Mallorca, you don't have to show your uh, health certificates anymore, your vaccination certificates, that all went. I was just reminded because I just saw a mask on the floor. Masks are still required on public transport, bus, I went on the taxis. Yesterday. You have to wear one, you know, they don't let you on. If you haven't got a mask, they'll tell you to get off. Um, so if you go in a taxi, a bus, um, anything to do with the medical profession, so hospitals, dentists, pharmacists, pharmacists yeah. um, there you're supposed to be wearing your face mask. But pretty much anywhere else, it's, everything's back to normal, so it doesn't really interfere with our day-to-day -day lives. There's a couple of taxis waiting for their first First fares and uh, reading on the Calvia notice board yesterday I think Philip Blackburn put up something about the the bus that runs from the airport which uh, if you don't have a transfer it's got to be the cheapest way to get from the airport to the resorts, there are many buses now, more than there used to be. It used to be really you had to get a bus into Palmer and then one out. But now there are buses which go directly from Palmer to the resorts. But it appears that these are seasonal, and so some of those will be finishing pretty much today. Um, when they start again, I think, uh, not today, well, maybe in the next day or two. Um, when they do start again, I think we'll actually go and do that trip so that people can see what it's all about. But uh, at the moment, in the last two or three days, the end of October, it looks as though that bus, uh, which takes you to Parmanova, takes you to Magaluf and beyond Santa Ponza, Pagera, um, and then the buses throughout the rest of the island, the direct ones are going to be taken out. So there'll still be a bus service but it'll mean you have to go into Palma, into the main bus station, and then uh, change bus uh, to wherever you're going, whichever resort you're going. So it was a great, uh, great innovation bringing that bus service in, um, but I suppose during the winter time when there's so many less tourists, particularly to these areas, then there's no, not really any call for that bus to run. So it's understandable, and I'm sure they'll be bringing it back. Um, questions frequently asked is when, and wh wh when's the season going to start? And uh, it's probably going to be around about Easter. And I don't think anything has changed. Everybody has spoken about um, <clears throat> extending the season into November, starting the season early in March, and what has happened well, pretty much nothing and uh, so far the resorts that we tend to go to it's exactly the same as it was before the pandemic and has been for the last 10 or even 20 years but that isn't how it has always been um, we've spoken to people who remember as we do when Mallorca was much more of a 12 month uh, 12 month holiday resort but uh, that stopped I don't know, 20 years ago or more maybe and hotels started one by one to close for the winter there has been a lot of talk in the Spanish press of um, extending the season 
by asking particularly people from countries like Germany, um, Northern Europe and Britain to come here for the winter where uh, they don't have to pay their gas and electricity bills and it's sort of an, like an energy saving <laughs> device. You can come on holiday, get a reasonably priced holiday and the amount of money that you save on your energy bills could well almost compensate for the price of the holiday. Um, doesn't seem to have affected Mallorca at all. It doesn't seem that there is any interest. And uh, so it's more down in the south of Spain where these uh, holidays are being pushed. Similarly, pensioners have been targeted by uh, southern Spain. So I think you'll find that uh, they will have uh, pensioners going for long periods of time, three, four, five weeks at a time, uh, and enjoying the winter sun down there, saving money on the energy. No such thing here in Mallorca. It's being discouraged, if anything. Hoteliers don't seem to have the interest of keeping them open. And uh, so, consequence of that is, places like this, how beautiful it is, on a beautiful day like today, people going in swimming, sun shining, and uh, come next week there will be virtually no tourists here. But the sun will still be shining. The sun will still be shining. Temperatures actually are due to drop next week though. That's because we're going away. <laughs> so instead of being uh, around about 28 degrees, which it was 28, 29 degrees yesterday, um, by the end of next week it will probably go down to about 20, 25, maybe a little bit below that, 23. Still be going to be beautiful, I'm sure. This is where we go down the steps. rickety steps, they're not very uh, very even they're not even in height and, uh, all the bits are broken away but we'll get down and then this part was actually completely broken away, it's now being repaired and uh, is a lot safer As we come round here, uh, the parasols have gone from the wooden stakes that are in the concrete. So these are largely private <laughs> beds here. I don't think they belong to any business, and so they're chained up. But the uh, the parasols have gone, and this is how it's set up for the winter. We're just coming over here to have a look at the water. Absolutely beautifully clear, calm, and we can see the fish swimming around. As we're walking, the sun is reflecting off the sea. <laughs> it just makes it feel that much warmer. But it's very quiet. The time of the year that we really like the weather's nice, it's a little bit quieter, easier to get about, and uh, really quite enjoyable. We're hoping to, to get into Palma later on. Another thing that happens during the winter time, so 
once all of the hotels have closed down, there'll probably be a week or two of uh, nothing much happening. Or maybe straight away, works will start by the, the local councils. And there are some major works going to be going on in Palmer. And uh, we'll have to go and have a look at that. So in the next uh, few weeks, the Paseo Maritimo, the road that goes along the front in Palmer, is going to undergo major uh, reconstruction, deconstruction, whatever it's going to be. Um, it's going to become more of a promenade than a road. But I'll keep you posted on that because that's something I'm quite interested in. Here in Santa Ponza, I haven't heard of any major works that are going to be carried out, but we'll keep coming down through the winter and having a look to see what's going on. And now it is starting to feel warm. We're still only about 10.30. Oh. I think it's that reflected heat. Just have to climb over this little wall here. Swimming pools are open. And the water won't be any cooler than it was a few weeks ago, really. So temperatures, um, particularly in the sea, will be really quite pleasant at the moment. Stony pebbly beach here. Let me just walk around the outside. My train is on today, so I don't have to worry about sand. <laughs> so she comes in flip flops and she comes in sandals. Don't flip flops. Flip you don't, I'm sorry. Sandals. Sandals. And the sandals always get stones or pebbles or sand in them. Can you imagine how uncomfortable that is. I don't think it's quite open yet, is it? Maybe we'll have a coffee, we'll investigate. So we found a nice uh, seaside place to have a, a coffee and uh, almost the only people here really at the moment. It is only just 10.30 in the morning, so it's very quiet. People are just starting to go out for a walk now. So I guess they're just leaving the hotels. Um, but it's a really pleasant day. Temperature's absolutely perfect for a walk and having a coffee by the sea. Cheers. 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 lovely coffee here at uh, Perseverantia, uh, in a beautiful setting right by the sea. It's really we're nice going, and quiet as well. We're going to continue our walk now. Just go back down towards the main beach. Everywhere starting to get ready now for lunch. So it's Saturday, so you probably get quite busy down here. Some of these restaurants may well stay open because locals come here. It's another little beachy 
area again very pebbly not like the main beach which is very sandy and then the rickety boardwalk which probably could do with a little bit of TLC a little bit of a pier here. I'm just going to go out to the end. Should give us a nice view of the bay. That beautiful white bird there. There's a white cormorant. It's like a white cormorant, isn't it? Or something else. So this uh, hard standing here is where the, the boats come uh, to pick up their passengers who go on little cruises around the island. And he's suggesting we might think about doing that before they all finish. To choose a very nice calm day. But it's a good spot to come and have a look around the bay. Just see how clear that water is. You can see straight to the bottom. And I guess it's quite deep here put the camera up so you can have a good look around. of a breeze blowing up now there's a need to take in our photographs filming me <laughs> we're gonna head back now to the beach you ready Long trousers on today, it must be a bit cooler. It's really a perfect temperature.
just as we come down now towards the beach there's nobody on the beach when we arrived and now it's starting to to fill up it's still only well, it isn't half past 11 yet a few people in the sea and uh, others making sand castles It's been a nice walk this morning, hasn't it? Really not. I do like it when the temperature goes down just a little. You just see across the road now lots of the shops have started opening up and the place is all coming to life as you'd expect and quite a few people now just out on their early morning promenades Where we, where we started. So we've had about an hour's walk, nice coffee, beautiful views, nice temperatures and really enjoyed that. So thanks very much for watching and we hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.